Good evening, you're watching Left, Right and Centre. I'm Nidhi Razdan. Tonight, the Supreme Court asked the government to come to a quick decision on a uniform civil code to end the confusion over personal laws. Is it time for India to have a common code or is politics coming in the way? Also tonight, dal mein kuch kala hai as dal prices shoot up to record highs. Is it the centre that had failed to act on time or did states ignore warnings? That's coming up in about 30 minutes from now. But first, will the NDA government finally bite the bullet on a uniform civil code? The Supreme Court has asked the centre to take a quick decision as it hears a case on a Christian Divorce Act where the petitioner has argued that the two-year mandatory separation period before divorce under the Christian law is unfair. In other religions, the separation period is one year. India has separate sets of personal laws for each religion governing marriage, divorce, succession, adoption and maintenance. The Supreme Court said yesterday that there's total confusion. We should work on the Uniform Civil Code. What happened to it? If you want to do it, then you should implement it. Well, the law minister has spoken to NDTV and said that all stakeholders need to be consulted before a Uniform Code is brought in. Uh, while answering on the floor of the House, I said that it needs to have a vital consultation. Article 44 and uh, um, uh, even in the Constitution, the preamble says that there should be a uh, common civil code in the country uh, uh, for the interest of the in the interest of the national integration uh, certainly a common civil code is necessary but it should have a wider consultation all personal law boards and all personal uh, um, laws which are in existence that has to be discussed uh, debated with the stakeholders with the public and with all the political parties and there should be a consensus well, the law minister, they're talking about a consensus. Is India finally ready for a uniform civil code? This has been part of the BJP's manifesto for a long time, but it has been politically an extremely divisive issue. Joining us on the program tonight, we have Mr. Bhartendra Singh, Lok Sabha MP of the BJP, joining us from Chandigarh tonight. Mihira Sood, well-known human rights lawyer here in the studio with us. Ratan Sharda of the RSS joining us tonight from Ahmedabad. Father Shankar, the spokesperson of the Delhi Catholic Archdiocese, also with us this evening. And Sanjay Jha of the Congress will be joining us us shortly. Let me ask Father Shankar first, what, what are your views on this entire matter? Today it's been hotly debated over the years. Currently the Supreme Court has talked about it in the context of the Christian personal law where it's, it's actually hearing a case related to the Christian Divorce Act. Mm -hmm. Do you think we're ready? See actually when it comes to Catholic Church as a whole, it's very clear we have canon law which is for the universal church but which clearly states it's not only you follow the canon law but every Catholic is bound to follow the civil law. Therefore, it's not that we make laws. It is the canon law, but we are asked to follow the local civil law of whichever state you are residing in. Secondly, when it comes to rights, whether it's rights of women, rights of children, the church has always stood for human rights. Therefore, we in no way we are going to be binding with the so-called, we call it, put it in term under draconian laws, no, which need not be. Anything that is going to be, which is enslaving women or children, we are going to be always against it. So would you support it. a uniform code? We would support, but then, as we have heard it, it's too early to say, because we are, everybody is asking what is uniform civil code. At least you bring us a draft. Have you at least began to think about it? Have you started reflecting? Just by saying uniform civil code, you have just given a name, but what it is, you have not defined it yet. Okay, let me ask Mr. Bhartendra Singh this question. And Mr. Singh, you know, is the NDA government, is the BJP ready to actually go forward on this? And you've got, you've been in a sense prompted by the Supreme Court more than once in the last few months. This is the second time in the last four months that the Supreme Court has made a mention of this issue of the Uniform Civil Code. Uh, is it time to now have a genuine debate and talk to all the stakeholders about this? It certainly is about time that we start talking about it because if, you know, this is an archaic law of 1840 was suggested by the Loka Alex uh, report which under the British period and we are still pushing it ahead. Uh, we had a very sad incident of the parliament um, under, under the uh, full majority government of the Congress and Rajiv Gandhi ji, uh, Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi uh, doing the Shah Banu case. So all these are very unfortunate incidents. It's about time that we address issues of women's rights, inheritance, divorce, and uh, other matters, and just have one, one secular law like most other developed countries do. Uh, but it needs uh, more than the BJP. It needs other parties and other 
minority groups to come up uh, with the reforms they want to get within and uh, come up with the suggestion because ultimately as the minister of law sadanand gaudaji correctly said uh, that the that the reform has to come from within it cannot be it cannot be imposed by the majority community but at the end of the day it also needs a political consensus and sanjay jha for too long political parties have played politics over this issue rather than having a genuine debate about it and the finger is normally pointed at the congress the shahbano case is is cited as the most famous example of how uh, you know you know the congress played politics on on this particular issue of of women's rights of maintenance you know today if the bjp was to move forward for a uniform civil code would the congress be willing to to have a, a genuine debate on this what is the congress's position today uh nidhi i think it's also important to set the record straight on on the shahbanu case as well i'll just take 30 seconds to tell you that please remember that when that verdict was made by the supreme court uh there were number of legal experts who were critical of the supreme court judgment itself because they felt that you know it was trying to interpret uh you know muslim law it was critical of islamic practices instead of adhering to the constitutional principles that should should have been the guiding point of the verdict but i'm not a legal expert but that was a unanimous opinion uh the second point i mean that is one of the verdicts ironically enough that apparently has made a lot of muslims apprehensive about the uniform civil code so let's try and understand here that we are a multicultural country there are diverse practices in terms of inheritance marriage divorce maintenance etc etc and therefore end of day if anybody played politics at that point of time you will know it that the bjp was two seats in the lok sabha and the entire you know extreme religious fundamentalism the hindutva movement took off from the shahbanu case so we know who made political capital on that supreme court verdict but the larger issue i will agree with you that yes times have changed uh, there is a contemporary india with newer social realities and expectations and aspirations however there is a caveat here nidhi and that is that if any discussion has to happen on the subject in a country like ours where there is a lot of you know intolerance and concern over majoritarianism being you know kind of imposed on the minority communities there has to be a mature political consensus i think the bharatiya janata party seems to take a very strident view uh, of the fact that end of the uniform civil code should not be given the perception that is going to subsume the practices of different minorities in the country but is that an assumption that is being made and let, let me take that to ratan sharda that is there an assumption that is being made by those who oppose a uniform civil code that uh, you know the bjp will invoke majoritarianism uh, that it you know that this this is part of a hindutva agenda because you know a lot of activists and lawyers and mira will explain that in just a moment actually see this as something that you know india is crying out for because of the kind of rights that it would give women how do we you know how do we separate politics from this debate mr sharda in order to go for forward constructively for this to come out of politics first congress has to come out of its own politics now let me explain sanjay ji talked about various legacies and you know uniform opinion that was the opinion in shahbano which they wanted let him remember let him recall that it is nehru legacy the directive principle has asked for a uniform civil code it is not bjp's legacy it's a legacy given by their own grand old man nehru so this is an obligation on us as a constitution to provide uniform civil code which the court has asked for secondly remember this directive has come from the court supreme court it is not bjp directive nor has government started it thirdly as modi has rightly pointed about a year back that uniform civil code does not mean hindu civil code for all it may first of all we have to agree without any preconditions which mr jha trying to put words in his mouth through minority institutions what not it's a secular country in a true sense of secularism as defined by english dictionary not by hindu people is that it is separation of state from the religion board so when a citizen of india is to be uh, worked uh, you know has to go for law for justice in indian constitution he has to go without any religious tag which means it it says uniform civil code that secularism demands for so on one side you talk of secularism but as soon as uniform civil code which has been inserted in the constitution by nehru and ambedkar we say it can be communal it can be majoritarian the very presumption makes it communal let us be clear first of all like uh, earlier gentleman clearly said it's a need of the hour 
if we agree honestly that we need US uniform civil code, common codes can be found, we can have expert committee which will create uniform civil code for all without referring to Hindu code or Christian code or Parsi code. Remember Christians can't even adopt uh, you know, offspring, Parsis can't do it. They don't have inheritance for 90 years, you know, no, even if they go for it. And those are absolutely valid Muslim points. Muslim women suffering hugely. Yeah. No, no. And those and are absolutely totally valid points. See, and that's why Hindu, I want to bring Mihira as, as, as a lawyer into this. Are because the biggest sufferers. Yeah. What kind of progressive talk is Congress talking about when yeah. they see that huge amount of Muslim women are the biggest no, sufferers? Can I respond to no. that? Sanjay, give me a second. I just, I just want, I just want to get the lawyer in. And Sharia cannot overrule the constitution. Okay. So, Mihira. First of all, please. Yeah. Let me just get Mihira who who is a Less human rights and, 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 and a, a women's rights else. activist in, in her own right. And so, Mihira, you know, for too long, this debate has got trapped in exactly this kind of politicking. And, you know, you argue that this is something that India really needs and needs quickly. Nidhi, my take on this is uh, slightly different from what has been, what all has been said so far, none of which I really disagree with, but I think the emphasis is different. I'm opposed to personal laws, yes, certainly on grounds of gender inequality and that's all personal laws. I think it's a complete myth that Hindu personal law is particularly gender equal, but that, that apart. Personal laws have a strong uh, problem with uh, gender equality. They are unequal among different religions, as you pointed out, in terms of adoption rights, in terms of maintenance, etc. They are impractical in context of increased inter-religious marriages and a rising atheism and but most importantly they are inherently unsecular and that is what we need to be focusing on we need to stop exactly. thinking of we need to stop thinking of secularism the indian way which is intertwining law with every religion as opposed to separating law from religion we need to completely separate law from religion and this idea of indian secularism which is True. as often as often invoked by the bjp when it comes to things like cow slaughter as it is invoked by the congress so i mean it, it's not about any political party i have i carry no brief for any political party both of them are equally to blame for invoking this sort of indian secularism which is really no secularism at all and what what it ends up doing is very dangerous because it only it doesn't end up benefiting any minority community it only ends up benefiting self-serving self-appointed patriarchal leaders of minority communities who or majority communities whether it is a, a mullah whether it is a sharia court whether it is a khap panchayat allowing them to speak on behalf of the entire community as if it's a monolith and no community is a monolith every community has different people in it with different interests and different stakes and if we are serious about minority rights as i am and as many uh, liberals in this country are then what we need to be focusing on is the individual who is the smallest and most vulnerable minority and therefore a common law and therefore yeah. exactly therefore a common law but that requires rethinking two basic things one we need to stop thinking of religion as some sort of public morality but we really need to imagine it as a matter of individual faith and individual practice we need to take the public element out of religion right, and secondly we need yeah. to rethink secularism yeah no and, and you know these are fundamental questions Sanjay Jha but on the politics of it as Ratan Sharda was pointing out uh, you know it he's right I mean this is about article 44 of the constitution that talks about the state working towards securing a uniform civil code. It's a directive principle of state policy. And it's not something that the BJP thought of overnight. Uh, you know, the point is, Sanjay, that has the Congress moved away from that politics of the 80s? Well, you know, can, can I tell you, Nidhi, isn't it stunning disclosure to hear an RSS spokesperson say that India is a secular country. I mean, this is, the, this is an organization that talks about Hindu Rashtra. You have repeated, you know, inflammatory statements of a divisive nature coming from them. But when it suits them, India becomes secular. Mr. Now, this Jha, is the political convenience of the RSS. This debate. Let me ask a fundamental question you here, Nidhi. No, RSS Mr. Sada, please do not interrupt. I'm talking okay, to the okay, anchor, okay, okay. not to you. Sanjay, finish now, the your point. point I'm making, Nidhi, if you can just kindly tell me, pause for a minute. Stick to the main point. Yeah. Yeah. The BJP point I'm making is, if it is a fact which is there, Article 44, if Article 44, if Article 44, and it is a directive, you know, principle of state policy, 
you know, it is it is absolutely incongruous, if not altogether preposterous, uh, for for the BJP to make it as part of of its manifesto. I think that's that's a question that ought to be raised because here we are talking about a, a desired or, or some kind of an achievable objective that society should aspire for. Now, the reason why it is in their manifesto, when nothing nothing happens about it, because it for them it's only to make a political noise, sound and fury pre and post elections. And the second point, which is very critical, Mr. Sarta, since he quotes history, and I'm glad he quotes not quoted our, uh, former Prime Minister Jawala Nehru, it is that Jansung and the RSS, you should ask Why me this question, speak for it the is that Jansung and the RSS if that opposed if, if, if the there proposed is a RSS uniform civil code that Baba Sahib Ambedkar talked about in the early 1990s. Sanjay, the point is, Why did you do that? Sanjay, the point is that the Congress perhaps did the biggest disservice to the cause of a uniform code and and for women's rights certainly in the Shah Banu case I mean the court gave an order uh, at that time for, for, for the maintenance of, of Shah Banu which which the Congress reversed through what many saw as a very regressive and a uh, law to secularism and, uh, and, and as, as Mihira says she uh, calls it a disservice uh, okay, to secularism okay, the Congress took India you know 10 steps back at that time my question no, is uh, has the party's view changed no no okay, but can I can, can I answer okay. that? I'm glad you. I, I want Sanjay to answer that, Mr. Singh, and I'll come to you after. That that, yeah. across, all laws, laws, then across, across all laws, across all laws, Nidhi, if I can answer your question, Sanjay, go ahead. Across all laws, Mira is completely right. The gender discrimination is the core issue, and I agree with you completely. I'm a liberal myself, and so I believe that you know that needs to be definitely, definitely corrected. There's a course correction that needs to be made. Absolutely right with her on that. On the Shah Banu case, I just want to make one point. There's a lot of criticism of the of the decision to uh, pass the you know the the MWA Act as it was called. But the truth is, just let me let me ask you this: Why would a party having more than 400 seats in parliament, having just won an election, one and a half year later, what politics was the Congress going to play? Nothing at all. There were Muslim conservatives who believed that this was an attempt to try and interpret Quran in a manner that they felt even the so Supreme you gave Court the was not appropriate in That's the criticism that the Congress gave into the Conservatives. That the Congress didn't stand up to the Conservatives. And Nidhi, that's precisely what I said in the beginning, that the only thing you're achieving by all of this is strengthening the Conservatives and doing a disservice to actual minorities. I want to get Mr. Bhartendra Singh. people while all the while talking to Liberals. Mr. I mean, Bhartendra Singh, people, the point is, no, no, one I, second, I, I the point to, now is, I Mr. Singh, one second, gentlemen, let me ask Mr. Singh this question. The point now is that the BJP then, now now that you're in power, you need to initiate that debate that Father Shankar was talking about. Let all the stakeholders know what it is that the government has, uh, you know, is proposing, what uh, this code will entail, whether there'll be a special panel, as, as Ratan Sharda was suggesting. You know, do, does that process now need to begin, Mr. Singh? Yes, certainly that process needs to begin and everybody, the whole party and the whole NDA is very confident about the Prime Minister because he has repeatedly said he wants to take everybody along with him. So as I said and as the Law Minister has just said uh, in, your, in your program that we have to consult the minority groups and the change must come from within them. The proposal must come from within them. As far as Sanjay's arguments were concerned, which are so divisive, which is so typically him, I, let's just forget all that, you know. Let's try and remember the good that, that the good the legislature and the Lok Sabha has done. Let's try and remember the yeah, Northeast yeah, Accord that Rajiv Gandhi did as, as well, the strong right? Prime Minister. Let's try and Mr. remember Singh, the Longawal Accord. The Prime let's try and remember the Panchayati Raj Act that he did. And you but he got four and let him finish, and started and started talking no, no, about the Shahbano case. Yeah. The Shahbano case was presented by a senior Arif Mohammed Khan, an intellectual, and suddenly halfway through the debate, the the, uh, the rug had been pulled from below his feet. He fell straight on his face and he was embarrassed and had to give in his resignation. Now let's just let bygones be bygones. Let's look ahead. Let's look ahead and all agree that the directive principles demanded, whether if the Hindus never allowed widow remarriage, Hindus never allowed uh, women rights for inheritance, all this has been... Okay, yeah, I just want to I just want to go law. across to and Dr. Maksud Kazmi. As Mihira rightly said, yeah, we yeah. all need to come up and come up with something good. Absolutely. I want to go across to Dr. Maksud Kazmi, who's the chairman of the Imam Council of India. And I want to ask you, Dr. Kazmi, that as the Supreme Court asked the government to take a quick decision on the issue of a uniform civil code, uh, how how do you feel about that? Do you think that India is ready at least for a debate on this? 
Nidhi, I have, though I have not been the part of the previous debate, previous discourse which is taking place, uh, <coughs> so far the common civil code, uniform civil code in our country is concerned, uh, parties, various parties and especially some par parivar, time to time these people keep raising the issue of common civil code in the country, but it is only for their own gain, for their political gain, they don't come, they still have not come with a frame, they have not formulated any type of uniform civil court. Let, they, let, us, let us come with a un, for uniform civil court, let us debate, let the debate the country which code and which law is the beneficiary for the human being, for the Indian, for our nation. So far, in our country, we have different traditions, different tradition, different societies, different law, different religions we have. It should also be incorporated in the, with the undivided Hindu, a divided Hindu family's law. So, so other people also, we Muslims are not alone there. But so Dr. many other castes, religious, tribals are also there. But Dr. So Kazmi, do, don't you think that when it comes to the court, issues of divorce or, or, or adoption or you know, just personal, all personal laws, uh, succession, that there should be just one law that governs all religions? Why bring religion into it at all? Isn't it time for us to break from that? No, Nidhi, our country just is working just fine. Right now, there is no need for any type of civil court. If, and if you are raising such issue, the very constitution which we are referring, which we are talking about, this constitution also advocates for the equality in jobs, equality in education, equality in, in economic, economic opportunities. Why are always silent or such issues. Okay, Mihira wants because to come in on that point. You are saying, there's no, need, you're saying there is no need to change the anything the now. The country is on the verge of civil war. Nidhi, one no, I one think, second, one Dr. second. Mihira. I think Dr. Kasmi must, must be the only person in the country who thinks that there's absolutely nothing wrong in the country on this issue. But on a more serious note, I, there are two reasons why, despite being in favor of a uniform civil code, I have reservations about it at this stage. One of them is the nature that the debate, the nature of this very debate, I mean, despite having talked in the beginning about how a uniform civil code needs to be based on individual rights and protection of individual autonomy and personal liberty and not on the basis of community rights. We are still talking about inviting consultations from community. Who is this monolithic community? Are you going to be inviting leaders of the community like uh, leaders, male leaders of the All India Muslim Personal Law Board or male representatives on Khap Panchayats? Are you also going to be inviting representatives from women's groups, from NGOs, from people who've worked with people persecuted by these laws? I mean, that's an important point. I keep trying to reiterate. A community is not a monolith. And to view it as such is itself unsecular. Okay, yeah. And the second reservation, yeah. very quickly, Nidhi, I have is, the, the second reservation is it being introduced by this government in this parliament at this stage and I'm not trying to be controversial here or anything like that but the fact remains that it's a sensitive issue and it should only be done when minorities in the country feel secure and I don't think that that is the case right now if it were to be done at this stage no matter how much we want it we have to think of the consequences it would have and I don't think that the atmosphere a conducive atmosphere for it has been created and the blame for that does lie at this Ratan point. Ratan do you want to take that on? Mihira supports a uniform civil code but she doesn't think minorities in this country uh, at this time feel safe and if the BJP tries to introduce it now, there will be motives seen into that. Is that fair, Mr. Sharda? I think, I think we are clouding the issues. In the name of liberalism, we are trying to create a communal environment. If BJP was the cause for minority feeling uncomfortable, why in during 60 years of Congress rule, there was no talk of uniform civil code? Neither. Uniform civil code comes from Supreme Court directive, from the constitutional directive. Neither RSS or BJP should have brought into it. It's a civil issue. It's a civic issue which is dealt at civil level. And first of all, as I said, first agree to go for civil uniform civil law. 
then a sports committee and community can sit together thrash out a new civil court which can be discussed i How completely i completely agree with you mr sharda the, the congress party should have brought it in and, and it would have been the much Muslim better if a party that is perceived to, to be secular had brought it in but that didn't happen but i just want to so ask so when you talk of union of civil court you are be completely communal but that doesn't mean that you are not going to have a civil court committee and sports committee and community committee and sports 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 committee and let us be reasonable you talk of uh, dadri lynching talk of a hindu youth killed in mudbidri why are you clouding the issues this kind of violence whether by hindu by muslim happens it has happened it is equally condemnable but you raise one issue and then you try to that one particular issue you want to cloud the whole constitution cloud the whole indian environment hey, people are doll, uh, falling at by the wayside murder day and night Let me What just get Father Shankar into this. I'm getting quick class debate? comments from Please everyone. Please stick to the fundamentals. Father, do you agree with Mehra about the, uh, the, the comment the on minorities? Is this the right time to do this? Otherwise, when is the right time? There will never be a right time in this country. That's what. That depends on the political parties. That we see very clearly. It's been more than 70 years, almost 70 years that we are talking What about uniform civil court, but nothing has happened. And as I agree, the situation, the conducive atmosphere is not right. There is time for everything, but what we have. they have achieved i would say the sang parivar the rss bjp they have achieved creating such a vicious atmosphere where every dialogue every conversation between two individuals is translated into a communal excuse angle excuse me there's an excuse you throw at us please stick to the fundamentals stick to uniform civil code and talk about it but but you Don't also have to, but we also have to accept the reality you cannot just really? close your eyes You cannot be blind to what's what happening reality? next to you. We are, talk, we are talking Shadda. about. My question to Father Shankar is this: Answer me here. Is that don't we need to? One second, one second. Just for a minute, can we not look at every issue in the prism? I, you know, maybe it's oversimplifying it, but to look at this issue through a communal prism, through the prism of minority rights, because this by itself is an issue that is important for the rights for, for the rights of women in particular. We, we began with that. We began the debate with that, but then. when we have to sit at a table the constitution was created by having constitution assembly deb debates for any law any new law you need to have a debate for that you need to have a basic frame basic draft where it is you are only talking about use uniform civil code in the air all no, right sir, well i think the important thing to see will be whether in the next few weeks because the court has ask the center to take a quick decision quick on this is. whether the government is actually able to have a dialogue with all the stakeholders and move ahead on this is not something the court has ordered them to, to do it needs to include groups within yeah, the minority everybody. community but really? but it's not an order it is something that the supreme court has said in its observations yesterday while here in this particular case i i have to take a break when i when i when we come back after that the other big issue today is the high food inflation dal prices have hit the roof they are at record highs today is the center to blame or did the states ignore warnings that's after the break